Reese James, you beautiful man, and what a right leg. Mm, man, I hope the club frames your leg one day because that is incredible. What a player we've missed essentially the whole season. Amazing. All right, everyone, welcome to the American Blues Podcast. This is your host, Terry Lee. Let's talk about Nottingham Forest 2, Chelsea 3. Another comeback win. Incredible. This game had everything from good passing, good play, poor play, poor Jackson, good Jackson, poor defending, comeback, absolutely everything. What a wild game. I've had a lot of time to calm down after the game. You know, I watched it and had to immediately go to work. So it's been a few hours now. So let's just go through it real quick. Positives. I mean, what can you say? Reese James, you know, I was actually afraid of what state he was going to be in when he came out because earlier this season when he would come back from injuries, he never really looked at himself. You know, he never sprinted full out. He just didn't have that like kind of class and swagger that he's always had the previous seasons. And no wonder he would just get immediately re-injured again. But today, man, this is the real Reese James. He's taking on tackles. He's flying up the field, putting in perfect crosses. Just unbelievable. What a player. So happy he's back. And then even Raheem Sterling, who I've given so much shit to this season for being selfish. He did amazing. He got our tying goal at a very important time. I think it was his first shot coming back onto the game. He was pretty much like, Hudson Odoi, I can see what you do, and I raise you one even better. And then even after that, he had a chance in the middle of the box where he passed it to Malagusta, who should have scored. So good play to him. You know, I think Sterling is a great impact sub. I don't think he's very good starting because he tends to get a little bit selfish and his negatives of not wanting to track back really leave that left side exposed. But as an impact sub, amazing, amazing. He does exactly what he needs to come on, change the game, score a goal. Awesome job. And I actually saw him going back into defense too. So good for him. Good for him. Maybe some time on the bench really doing some good. And the other positives, Jackson's last goal with the header again. So many people have said he can't score headers, which a lot of times he can't. But this game, he actually showed that what he can't do with his feet, he's doing with his head because he had a lot of runs today that just went absolutely nowhere, slowed down too much, no awareness, kept destroying attacks. Oh, and he missed a one-on-one with the keeper. Again, easy chances, not his thing, but... Whatever. It doesn't matter. He scored the game-winning goal in the dying minutes of the game. There's just nothing better than that. And I love the celebration. Of course, he got another yellow card. He's just collecting yellow cards. But that's, I think, 14 Premier League goals on the season. Not bad. Not bad at all for your first season in Premier League. Another positive. It was so great seeing Nkuku come on. And really, actually, a positive goes out to Pochettino. You know, for the first 45 minutes of the game, we were not good. You know, apart from that one good pass from Palmer out to Mudrick, not very good. We were slow. The Cucurella inverted uh, formation just didn't really have much an effect today. And I think it was mainly because Nottingham Forest packed the center of the field so much that they basically told us, hey, you're not getting through here. So having that extra man in midfield didn't really do all that much for us. And non horror Forest basically said, come at us from the wings. And our wings just didn't really do anything. You know, Mudrick, apart from that goal, had one good run where I think he made a really poor choice in his passing. And then Mudueke was just completely locked down on that right side. He got no joy running on that side. So, but, you know, days like that are going to happen. And we have to grind out wins sometimes. And I love seeing how the team never put their head down they kept trying. They kept their heads held high. And second half, we actually started playing better. And like I said, I think that goes down to the manager. He made a quick change. You know, Badashil, I thought, was pretty bad today. He had several times where Wood was starting to outpace him. And Thiago Silva outran Wood for one ball chase. And I was like, I, I don't know how you're getting beat by Wood, and you should not be. But Badashil, not very good. Madueke, not effective. So 55 to 57 minutes in, Pachi said, no more. Let's bring on Nkuku. Let's bring on Gusto. And immediately the game changed. More energy, more passing incisiveness. So great, great on Pochettino. Whatever he said at halftime clearly helped. 
and I'm glad to see an early change when early change is warranted. Another positive, of course, Cole Palmer, even though he had kind of a quiet game the rest of the time, you know, it it can't be understated just how influential he is to this team. You know, he rarely just scores, you know, the fourth or fifth goal where it doesn't matter as much. He either assists or scores the first goal, the tying goal, the go-ahead goal, just something that he does each game impacts the game in a dramatic way. And that first ball out to Mudrick. What amazing. He got the pass from Thiago Silva. He held up the play because he knew Mudrick was on the run and he passed it perfectly to Mudrick. And to be fair to Mudrick, who I've also crapped on a lot this season, great first touch, great instinctive finish. That's one I want to see more of him. That run, that run down the wing, beating your defender, going into the box shooting. That is everything I've wanted to see from him this season. That goal. I don't know why he couldn't do more of that goal. I mean, he should be making that run just again and again and again all game. Just people fighting him on the left side, him using his speed. But I think better positional play and more experience will help with that. But today you can see why his speed can be so devastating. But there are other times this game where you also saw, man, his final decision-making, final passing can still be pretty poor sometimes and completely destroy attacks. And the same thing can be said for Jackson. Another big positive today is Petrovic. You know, he didn't really have that much to do the first half in terms of important saves. He did have one cross where he kind of flapped at it and Chris Wood almost scored because the ball just happened to land on his head. Not very good, but then second half, he turned it on. He had several key saves at the end of the game, key interceptions, really important times where he just needed to be strong and grab the ball with both hands, and he certainly did that. So I love Petrovic. I, you know, do we need a world-class goalie? It would be nice. It would be nice. I would never turn down the world-class goalie. It just happens that the world-class goalie market is extremely thin right now and you can just see what happened with onana at united terrible choice terrible uh transfer and it's given you know he's contributed to so many goals that united have given up this season and just overall shoddy defense so uh, what i would say for petrovic is if it ain't broke don't fix it until there's a true world-class goalie like courtois was back in the day I say just stick with something that works. Another positive, Caicedo. I think this guy is just getting better and better at each game. You know, when he has support in midfield and room to run into, he's actually quite a good dribbler. And that final pass out to Reese James that started that counter, incredible, incredible vision. Perfectly weighted pass to Reese James, who just took it in its stride. Now, a few negatives. Obviously, Nottingham Forest, bottom of the league. We gave away way too many chances, especially in that first half. They were just pounding our defense again and again. And also, Hudson Odoi, you know, he's a Cobham player. Like, he grew up in Cobham. He only left last summer. Like, everybody should know how one-footed he is. Everyone on the whole team and the whole crowd and the whole city should know that when Hudson Odoi has the ball... He's going to take it down the wing and then cut it onto his right foot and either cross or shoot. And that was just awful defending, letting him go back onto his strong side again and again. And it's not like we didn't have warnings. He had several shots on that right foot already, exact same move, cutting in, taking a shot. And we were lucky a few times because he hit the post, he hit it over. But you just can't keep out that right foot for that long. And the more chances we gave him, we're just asking for it. And of course, we got punished. Uh, is it disappointing seeing him celebrate after just being away for club for one season and when he's, you know, born and bred in Cobham, we raised him, we took care of him during all of his injuries. Yeah, a little bit, but you know, can you blame him? He's fighting a relegation battle. So, so be it. And another huge negative is that second goal. My goodness, what are we doing on that cross? How can Jackson marking one of the tallest players on the team just stop running? He literally stopped running while the ball was in the air and just said, nah, not for me. And of course, we left one of their tallest players open in the middle of the box. What are we doing? We can't defend like that. I don't, I don't know what kind of defensive plan that is. Are we playing some kind of weird zonal system where you only mark a player until they get into the middle of the box and leave them free? That's that's insanity. Like We, we need to knock that crap out. Like Over summer, preseason, I want them to just work on defending, how to mark your players, how to track them. 
never want to see that kind of goal again. My God, that was horrendous. But overall, I would say this and the Aston Villa game, you know, we're, we're really showing some heart and that's good to see. We're showing some commitment to the team. We're seeing some actual teamwork. And it's, you know, besides Aston Villa, this is one of the first times this season where we didn't play well. We made good changes and we just kept trying and through pure effort and passion and teamwork, we were able to come back and squeeze out a win when we weren't playing well. And that is huge. That is a huge statement, especially at the end of the season. You know, we need to carry this momentum forward, finish out these last two games, keep putting pressure on Tottenham, Newcastle, and I would say United, but man, they're not winning tomorrow. So they're, I think they're long gone. I don't think they're getting any points the rest of the season. So they're just in a free dive. But just think about it. Compare where we are at the end of the season to a year ago. A year ago, we were on our fourth manager. Even with the fourth manager, we didn't get any kind of bounce. We lost every game Lampard managed at the end of the season. I think it was like 11 losses straight. We were absolutely deep in the shitter. No hope for it. Like I had no hope at the end of last season, just absolutely disgusted by what I saw. And even after this roller coaster season, the way we're finishing is good. I love the way we're finishing. We were actually seeing a team come together for the first time in two and a half years. We're starting to see a team come together. And one last note, which is with Pochettino's interviews this week, you know, I understand he sometimes doesn't speak the best English and his phrases might be wrong, but I say, I think his message is quite clear. You know, he basically just said, Hey, look, I'm here to do my job, to make the fans happy, to make the owners happy, but you need to give me a longer contract. You know, no manager ever likes playing with just a one year contract. That means there's no confidence. That means he really doesn't have a say in the dressing room. The players know when the mass manager is on their last season and there's, you know, no sight of a longer contract in in the window then they know they don't really have to perform they're not going to be able to say that much against them you know they're gone while the players are here to stay so i think pochettino is making it pretty clear to the ownership and to his sporting directors like hey if you like what i'm doing you gotta give me an extension that gives my team the confidence to be happy and to know that we have your support and i think if we end the season with another two wins and we are on a positive trajectory, I think he deserves more than just to be left out to dry with a one-year contract remaining, right? So it'll be really interesting to see what happens over summer. I think this summer is absolutely huge. You know, we have made mistake after mistake after mistake across multiple transfer windows. Besides these two or that really that one Esteval with the end, like Brazilian wonder kid talent, whatever. If he's going to be the next Neymar, whoever he is, sure, spend the money on him. I don't want to see any more youth potentials from around Europe. I want to see an experienced striker, an experienced defender, and I think that's all we need. If we can keep Chalaba incredible, if we have to trade Gallagher for an experienced striker like Ossiman, I don't like it, but I understand it. I understand we have our financial limits after spending money more than any other club in the history of the sport has done across these two and a half seasons. We do have to take it easy. You know, we can't just hope that we do better and eat point deductions. That doesn't, that's not a very good long-term plan. Probably needs another season at least of building before we can really start to challenge, but in order to make that climb, we need the right transfers and we must get the right transfers and we have to have the right manager. And right now, if the manager's proven that he's doing well, the team is clicking and the players have publicly said that they want him to stay, there's no reason to change that. It would be absolutely insane to make another change when the team is finally doing well. So I, I'm loving what I see right now. We still have defensive errors that need to be solved, but keep up the momentum, keep up the pressure. And if luck is on our side and we do our part in performing well, we could get Europa. We could get top five. You know, Tottenham still have two games they have to win. And I don't think they're going to win against City. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the game. And see you after the next one. Peace.